Social media gives unreal opportunities to normal people. It can be seen as the great equaliser of the modern age, a way to smash through the wall of nepotism that surrounds the celebrity world. If you can make it, then you can have it all. However, you may always have to look over your shoulder for the rest of your life. Viewer discretion is advised for this educational documentary. Welcome or welcome back to Dark Case Documentaries. I bring you true crime, disturbing stories and other things that you may later regret knowing with regular uploads every week. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. If your name is on screen right now, then you're a legend. Our love and respect goes out to all those affected by this dark case. Ava Majuri was a well-liked all-American girl that grew up in New Jersey, USA. She was born to parents Robert, a former Jersey City police officer, and mother Kimberly, an ultrasound technologist. Ava had an older brother named Ethan. Two years after Ava was born, she was joined by her younger brother, Logan. Ava, even though young, was described by her parents as a go-getter. She relentlessly pursued her natural ability towards both entrepreneurship and marketing from a very young age. By 2019, Ava was 13 years old. At this time, her parents had decided to move from the hustle and bustle of the Northeast to a peaceful, well-established area of Florida. Settling in Naples, Ava's family enjoyed the sunny days and the constant vacation-like experiences that they got to have every single day. Ava, although happy in her new place, she missed New Jersey. She now wanted an outlet for her loneliness and some form of connection with her now long-distance friends. Therefore, Ava began her TikTok account in 2020. She would post videos of herself dancing, singing along to popular songs and even pranking her family. To her surprise, her account soon reached viral status, the result of which was her gaining over 1 million followers. She used this opportunity to do what she had always done. She began carrying out promotional videos in exchange for monetary compensation. She would promote things like teeth white products and phone cases and NFL games. Ava, even at 13, knew what she wanted out of life and she strived to get it. Naples, Florida is at the southeast end of the United States. It's known for its peaceful beaches and affluent communities. Naples, much like Florida as a whole, is a huge tourist attraction for the masses. It's generally seen as a safe area for families to raise their children. And I'm sure that's why the Majuri family ended up there. Although Ava attracted friends and other girls her age that enjoyed dancing and singing, 75% of Ava's fan base were male users. One of these males was Eric Rowan Justin, an 18-year-old fan of Ava who found her account in the early months of 2020. This was at the height of the lockdown situation that I'm not allowed to name, and Ava was now more active that everyone was in a countrywide lockdown. When he first saw her, he immediately became mesmerised by her, never mind the fact that she was only 14 years old. While, yes, let me remind you, he was 18. Eric immediately took to commenting on Ava's videos. He would talk about how beautiful she was, and he would say how he just wished that he could meet her. When his comments didn't get the response that he was hoping for, Eric began messaging Ava on all other social media platforms. He would beg for a response from this budding influencer. On Ava's end, she would occasionally see the username, which was EricJustin111, flash across her phone screen as she replied to her fans' messages. But with so many followers, this was nothing that concerned her. She would reply to his messages from time to time, knowing that the more she replied to the fans, the more of a loyal following she would then create. 
However, as time went on, the messages from Eric would become more frequent and more obsessive. He would message her over and over on all of her various platforms. This included on Discord servers where Ava would play video games with her brothers. Although yes, it was definitely a large volume of messages, Ava, a young, giving girl, tried her best to ignore his advances and continue onwards with her goals. It was soon after this that Ava would begin getting text messages and calls from an unknown number. Disturbingly, she would soon discover that this number belonged to Eric Justin. Confused as to just how he could have gotten her personal information, Ava searched for any avenue that Eric could have ventured to gain her cell phone number. This is how Ava discovered that her friends from both New Jersey and from Florida were jealous of her social media fame. They sold her personal information to Eric Justin. Sold in exchange for completed maths homework or Venmo payments. If that doesn't sound like something from a Netflix teen drama, I don't know what does. Ava now knew that her parents had to be involved. She now believed that she had her first very real stalker. Both parents quickly lent their support to get her through this hard time of betrayal. Ava began unfollowing her New Jersey and Florida friends for her own protection against Eric. Sadly, this only fueled the fire of Ava's loneliness, not helped by the harsh words she received from her former friends. However, none of this stopped the messages from Eric. Even though Ava was under discomfort, because of the actions of her ex-friends, she tried to just be polite with him to end the harassment. When Eric asked Ava to send him pictures of herself, he even offered her money for them. But even forgetting this monetary aspect, Ava hoped that if she sent him personalised photos of herself, that he would finally leave her alone. So, with the approval of her parents, Ava sent Eric two pictures of her face in exchange for money. Ava now thought that the nightmare was finally over. This man had finally gotten what he wanted and she would now have peace. However, this theory couldn't be further from the truth. This ordeal was just beginning. It didn't take long for Eric to beg Ava for more photos through her Venmo account. He outlined exactly what he wanted from her, saying that he would return her favour with $300. He wanted photos of Ava that he had no business asking for from a minor. Definitely photos that Ava's parents said a 14-year-old girl had no business sending. But when she refused, Eric began sending her money anyway. First he sent her $100, then then $200 and then $300 saying, sorry, this is all I have left. I'm broke. This was the final straw for Ava and her parents. At this point, they could see that there would be no end to these messages and pleadings. Eric wanted more and more, now venturing into the realm of explicit content. But instead of contacting authorities in relation to Eric's disturbing requests, Ava's father messaged Eric with a final warning. Ava's father sent a text message to Eric's cell phone telling him to leave her alone. He sternly explained that Ava was still a minor and he said that Eric was never to contact her again. Eric had been blocked on all social media from the subject of his obsession. This was something that he simply couldn't bear. He now turned back to the people that Ava knew. He wanted to gain even more personal information about her. However, he couldn't get it and he became more and more angry as he didn't find what he was looking for. But finally, Eric had contacted one of Ava's classmates and asked if he had a firearm. He shared his plans for attacking her in retaliation for her rejection. These disturbing text messages ultimately made their way back to Ava and her family. This understandably shook them to their very core. Ava immediately contacted the classmate that talked to Eric. She had to double check that all the information she had was correct and if there was any more information she needed to stay safe. After this, Ava and her parents researched Eric Justin's identity extensively. 
they discovered that he lived in Maryland. This was a state across the country. Maryland was far enough away that Ava's parents felt that she was out of harm's way. They now just called Eric another keyboard cowboy. Believing he was simply someone who bullies behind the mask of a screen and never acts on what they say. July the 10th, 2021 was just like any other day. Ava was in her room engulfed in her social media business when suddenly she heard a loud boom. Ava looked up to see a hole in her door. She instinctively immediately knew what was happening. She felt it in her chest. Eric Justin had found her. Not only that, he had just shot a bullet right through her front door. She ran through to the bathroom that's connected to her and her brother's room, simply trying her hardest to get away from the immediate threat. Father Robert had also heard the commotion. He bolted from his bedroom, running towards the front of the house. Mother Kimberly was close behind him. Father Robert peeked outside to see a teenager wearing a blue vest. He also had earplugs and glasses and he was standing in his front yard. Most disturbingly, he was holding a large firearm, but luckily, it was jammed. Robert knew exactly who this teenager was, and this father was going to make sure that Ava would be protected from Eric Justin at all costs. When Eric saw Ava's father at the front door, he began to retreat. Perhaps this ordeal was now over, if, that is, we forget a father's protective love for his daughter. Robert was not going to let Ava's assailant get away so easily. He then ran outside after him. Robert, however, fell and injured his knee, laying there thinking of what to do next as Eric was running away. He decided to drag himself back inside the house and retrieve a firearm of his own. He waited by the front door as the family waited for police to arrive. Meanwhile, Ava and her two brothers hid in their parents' bedroom at the rear of the house. Whilst there, Ava's brother said the words, This is all your fault. But now was not the time for blame. The family waited to see what would happen next. Before the police could get to the house, Eric Justin returned. His firearm was now once more in working condition. Father Robert stood in the doorway to his house, screaming at Eric to drop his weapon. Eric now saw the firearm in the father's hand understanding exactly what he was threatening to do. Robert watched as Eric raised his weapon, and a shot rang out through the neighbourhood. A shot that would end a life. It was there, in Ava's front yard, that Eric Justin would take his final breath, losing his life in the pursuit of a sick and relentless obsession. Police recovered two cell phones from Eric's body, both of them were filled with pictures and hours of videos from Ava's social media accounts. Officers also learned that this was not the first time that someone had tried to gain access to Ava's address, but no one had taken it this far. Ava's family was shaken and they needed time to recover. They moved in with friends while they attempted to process what had just happened. As far as legal proceedings, people wondered what would happen to Ava's father for ending the life of her stalker. However, Robert was never charged with the use of his firearm, quoting the Stand Your Ground law which is present in Florida. This law protects homeowners against prosecution when they use deadly force in order to protect themselves and their property. This left Ava's father free from any kind of persecution or prosecution. It was simply an act of bravery to protect his family. In a strange twist of fate, Ava's social media skyrocketed even more as a result of the events from July the 10th. She was invited to Los Angeles to meet with other social media influencers and attend events. Her story was shared all over the world. While many thought it was time for Ava to step back from the online world, her parents encouraged her to keep going in social media, saying that it was a healthy distraction for her and that generally the good outweighed the bad. How do you feel about the case? Do you feel Robert should have been charged? Please do let me know down in the comments. And remember, if you appreciate what I'm doing here, please do hit that like button. Be careful out there and I'll see you soon.